So I thought I'd take a little break from uh, building and wiring for a minute and take a look at our analyzer with my analog scope. It's hard to beat an analog scope. Um, they're classic. They're sexy. And you can see some nuances that in a digital, at least my rival, just doesn't pick up terribly well. So this is my long wire antenna. Showing a lot of noise, you know, I have a lot of noise in this area, power line noise. And that has plagued me for uh, a couple of years now. And makes it, you know, below 10 megahertz. It makes it a little difficult on, on receivers here. So it is what it is for right now. So that's what we have right now. And I think on the left-hand side of the screen, you know, below 10 20 megahertz, you see some of that is, is shown. And but it's kind of noisy all the way through. It doesn't look like there's much activity on the airwaves at the moment, but this area is kind of kind of weak in that regard. So I thought I'd just take a look and see what that looks like, and it's it's pretty interesting. So let's uh, let's switch over to my my scope calibrator that I use for uh, square waves. I have an input coming into the scope, or the analyzer rather, and uh, you can see the zero spur on the left hand side of the screen, um, which is uh, what occurs when you pass through the uh, 145 megahertz bandpass filter. When it sweeps through that, you get this. Uh, what's called a zero spur and that is normally sort of shoved off to the side on the left hand side of the screen but the triggering on the scope is eh, it could be a little bit better it, the scope uh, uh, it's seen a few years and needs some contact cleaner so but for now um, that's what that looks like uh, my square wave source and this is a megahertz and uh, it looks pretty good actually the baseline noise not bad there's a little bit of distortion on the individual signal peaks but nothing i can't live with but overall the sand ledger a pretty nice job of the way it's configured right now again i i put together the 15 kilohertz filter for it but i haven't integrated into the rf board yet so we're looking at the 250 um, I have filter right now and again it looks it looks pretty clean um, I still have more work to do um, it could be a little cleaner uh, we'll see when we put it actually all together actually this week I worked a little bit on a um, an audio output that I'm gonna do some testing on when some early morning and see how I can integrate that into uh, the analyzer. Um, it'll basically be a substitute for uh, the logarithmic amplifier right now so I can switch between the two. Um, after all it is a receiver so that's kind of something I'm looking forward to but um, that'll wait until uh, other things get done on this card. Um, I tend to work uh, pretty early in the morning, um, generally 3 to 5 or so, 5.30, however long I can stress it before I get ready to go to work and, and do my labors there. Um, so let's see what we can do here. And it looks pretty, pretty nice. That's down to 500 kilohertz now. Let's see if we can move this guy up a little bit and get a better, a better look. See, yeah, yeah, that's that's pretty nice. I'm not sure how this is going to turn out on the video. Quite uh, scope sometimes is uh, CRT based ones. Um, you have to be careful with. Um, sweep rates, etc., or you get this fading effect, which I, I'm seeing on the screen right now, uh, the computer screen.
So this is zoomed in uh, a little bit, and as you can see, it's uh, it shows up. Uh, it's pretty similar to the Raggle, but uh, uh, it's a little cleaner on the tops. But it, that uh, sort of <clears throat> and if it's higher, low frequency, tail off a little bit on the peaks. Um, if anybody has any comments on that, well, you're always free to comment. So let's. Uh, Take this back sort of where we were. And what else can we do here for, for the moment? And that is, what do we have here? That's five megahertz. And let me get this back down here a little bit so we can see things a little, a little better. We get on the slower swoop speeds, and uh, we get that uh, that CRT effect. Overall, I'm pretty pleased with this analyzer. Um, you know, when you build these things, you you learn quite a bit, and I certainly building this one learned more about the uh, hobby spectrum analyzer that that I looked at. Uh, you know, over the past year or so, and uh, realized that um, part of the problem was the 145 megahertz second IF frequency, which was giving me all kinds of funny business when you really looked at these signal peaks. Um, that and the the two resonator uh, bandpass filter was really not um, optimized terribly well. That's that's on me. Um, but since then, I've I've picked up some, I've gotten some better education on that. And uh, I noticed when I had uh, the two resonator filter in this one of a different design, um, it worked a hell of a lot better. So um, given I bought this commercial one, that I'm going to continue to use that one will fit uh, the one I built will fit into the hobby spectrum analyzer pretty well I think so eh, that looks about uh, sort of where we're at at the moment in the analog world so um, thank you